Hey CF Kids, it's Miss Alice, and I know I say this every single week, but I miss you all so, so much. But hopefully I get to see you in person soon. Just a reminder that our midweek lessons are all about missions. So today we are going to learn about how people and churches are reaching the nations right here in the United States in a town called Clarkston in the state of Georgia. Check it out. My name is Lorna, and this is my neighborhood. My weird, eclectic, diverse, delicious neighborhood. <laughs> Clarkston, Georgia is like no place in the world because Clarkston is the world. <laughs> Time Magazine calls this the most diverse square mile in the country. More than half of my neighbors are from another nation and three-fourths speak a language other than English. Every person who comes here has a story to tell. Their stories are important because they are important. And that's why we've come to Clarkston. Because those are the stories and those are the people who are turning my neighborhood and yours into a land of new opportunities. Have you guys ever heard of Clarkston, Georgia before that video? So many people that live in Clarkston are from all around the world. They're speaking different languages and they're coming from different cultures. Lorna has an awesome opportunity to reach the nations right where she is. Because remember that mission that Jesus gave his disciples we just learned a few weeks back? About going and making disciples of all nations. That's what Lorna is able to do right here in the United States. Many of the refugees and people that Lorna is coming in contact with have experienced very dangerous situations and they've been lied to a lot. So it's so important to Lorna that she is honest and that she's able to build trust with the people that she comes in contact to so that she is able to share the love of Christ and share with them how Jesus wants a personal relationship. Here's another story of someone else who lives in Clarkston, Georgia. Check it out. I was eight years old when I came to the United States. And when I finally found out that I was a refugee, I hated someone say, oh, those refugees. I have a name. My name is Fatmata. Fatmata. We came as refugees and we're part of the UN uh, program. I come from a Muslim background, so, um, but I used to always say, I'm gonna be a Christian one day. And here I am. I came here every day since the second grade I've been part of here. To help with homework. It's taught me English. Started doing violin lessons here. You know, like 10 years later, I'm still playing the violin. Man, I cannot tell my life story without including this here. I have to. You got to study because you're going to make these grades. You're going to do well, okay? Yeah. They started having Bible studies on Wednesdays and I started reading it. And I finally decided this is where I am. I am a second year um, student at Georgia State. Woo woo! Go Panthers! <laughs> I'm a full-time church member and I am just like you, you know what I mean? I, I am somebody, and that's, that's what I want people to think. Yeah. Wow, wasn't that an incredible story of Fatimata giving her life to Christ? Well, before I let you go, I wanted to share a personal story. I have been to Clarkston, Georgia. And so I wanted to share with you what I did and how God used it to teach me something. So I went there on a mission trip with some of my friends when I was in college at University of South Florida. 
So most of the time we were up in Georgia, we were giving out food to people who were on the streets. But then the last day we were there, we drove out to Clarkston and one of my friends had a connection with one of the apartment complexes. So usually the offices at apartment complexes look like a normal office. They have desks and they have uh, areas where people can come in and sign papers. They might have some chairs. Well, this was completely different. It was set up like a classroom, kind of like the classrooms that you have at your school. And so there were books, there were uh, tables and desks and chairs, and there was whiteboards so that you could teach and write on them. So we went there because when all of the kids who live at that apartment complex, they leave school and come home, um, they need help with their homework. Their parents can't help them usually because they speak a different language and usually all of the papers and their homework are in English. So what they do is they come to the office or their classroom and they get help to uh, figure out how to finish their homework and they read books and they get to play together and um, so that's kind of their routine every day. So we went there to help them figure out their homework and to help them uh, understand all the English on the paper. So when I went, um, I was actually going to school to be a teacher. Um, so you know, you would think that I'd be super excited. Well, I really wasn't. I didn't feel like my heart was very joyful to go there. Um, I wish that we were still handing out food to people on the streets that day. Um, so I was kind of grumpy, not gonna lie. But when we got there, we met all of the kids. They were very sweet. And then I was helping one of the students. And then I think I got up for something and this girl ran past me. And she said, hey, can you help me with my homework? I was like, sure, okay. So I follow her and sit down next to her and I asked her what her name was. And she said, A-L-I-C-E. And I was like, what? Why are you spelling my name? How did you know my name? I didn't have a name tag on or anything. So I was just asking her, why did you just spell my name? I asked you your name. And she said, no, that's my name. My name is Alice. And I said, what? my name is Alice. So I don't know about you guys, but I have not met many Alices in my many years of life on earth already. So this was already crazy as it is. Um, but then I asked her where she was from and she said Tanzania. And Tanzania is not even in this country. She came over here from Tanzania um, when she was younger. She was only five. Um, so as I was just thinking, I don't believe in coincidences. I know that God is very personable. God wants to teach us things um, in, in different situations. And so in that time, I was just completely overwhelmed because I knew this was God speaking to me. I knew that there was no way this was a coincidence. I came to Clarkston, Georgia met a five-year-old girl from Tanzania and we had the same name. It was no coincidence. And so then I realized how God was calling me into ministry. God was telling me how I had my own plan. I had everything uh, figured out, I thought, and I wanted to go with that plan. I wanted to do my plan, but God showed me and God changed my heart so that I would be open to what his plan for me is. So I just wanted to share that, that personal um, experience because Clarkston, Georgia is so incredibly unique. Um, and it's actually not even far from here in Tampa. And there are people from all over the world there. Um, so I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys are encouraged that we can still go and make disciples of all nations, even right where we are. We don't necessarily have to wait until we go to a different country, that we can meet people right where we are that are from different nations and different backgrounds and different cultures, and we can share the love of Christ with them. So I hope you guys are encouraged. I hope you guys um, are pumped to go share the love of Christ and the gospel with people. But I would love to close this out in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much for 
all of the people that you have brought um, to the United States, to Clarkston, Father, but even the people that you have called to minister to them, Lord. Thank you so much for being so personable. Thank you so much for having personal relationships with us, Lord. You know us better than we know us, Father, and I thank you for that. I praise you for that, Lord. I pray for all of our CF kids that they are encouraged, Father, that they are excited, Father, to share your love with the people you have placed around them, Father, that they can start right now, right today, Father, with sharing your love and sharing the gospel with other people that you have placed in their life. I pray blessings over our CF kids and their families, and I pray that I will get to see them soon because I miss them so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys. Have a great week. I love you so much.